Welcome everybody to Let's Make Art Live. Um, I am your host for the evening, Brock yes. Barton. <clears throat> and I'm substituting for Sarah Cray. She is taking a well-deserved vacation with her husband. Uh, they're uh, going and doing fun stuff. I won't tell you because that's their business, but they're doing fun stuff for their anniversary. And so instead of canceling the live, we decided that uh, between all the people at Let's Make Art, we could probably do it. So we'll figure it out. <laughs> we could figure it out. So uh, again, I'm Brock. I've got Keenan. Keenan's the one Kenan, that normally does all the camera usually work. Usually in the background. Today you see me. So if you watch our tutorials or videos. Now you know why I'm in the back. Yeah. <laughs> And then to my left here, we've got Taylor. She works customer service for us. She's fantastic. And on the camera, you can't see her, uh, Nicole. Nicole Santo, the one that does the hand lettering. She's a champion and she's a... Uh... Someone said, turn down volume on Mike for the green guy. <laughs> volume gone. Okay. So uh, yeah, tonight we're painting... Will you hand me the... Not that one, that one. Tonight we're painting... The geometric Ooh. landscape. Ah. Yeah, thank you, Taylor. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this is what we're painting tonight. No sounds. I actually painted this one. This isn't one that Sarah painted. I painted this in practice. Really? Uh, it's not bad. All my birds are in a row, so that's kind of awkward. But I told Sarah, she was teaching me how to do it. And I said, listen, birds fly in rows all the time. That's true. Uh, because it's aerodynamic. So she made fun of me, but science was on my side this time. Okay. <clears throat> so if you'll set that over there. Do you want this as an example for a bow? No, I want the step out sheet. Booyah, great. All right, so we've got our step out sheet. Now I think Sarah normally does warm ups first and then the oath, but I think it'd be better if we uh, start with the oath because if not, I might judge my warm ups against somebody Dang. else. So <laughs> don't tell her, <laughs> she's on vacation. Okay, <clears throat> man. Do you remember the oath? <laughs> I don't know if we'll get the order right, but uh, okay. Yeah, we'll get it. Hands up, everybody. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Thank you. All right. So nobody tell her that we did the oath first, but I thought I really needed it before we got started. Okay. So. Uh, normally I know that we do warm-ups first and then we get into the project. This project though has a lot of drying. So I figured we would get started with some of it and then as we're waiting for drying, we will practice, do some practice for the next steps. Sweet. So uh, just do what I tell you to, it'll be fine. Look at you. It always works that way. Wow. Okay, so first things first. What you need is a round object for your moon. What we're gonna use is we're gonna use this Live Life on the Edge mug. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> thank you to one of our great fans that sent that in. And uh, Taylor, where's your? That's okay, we can share. Okay. <laughs> this is about the right, oh, that's perfect. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your little circular moon mug or roll of tape. This is when you switch. <laughs> and we put it down on our paper, uh, somewhere in the right hand side. I like to think of like the rule of thirds. So if you've got lines on your paper like this, you kind of want the moon to be in this little intersection for composition purposes. That's what they say at least. Okay. So you're going to put your little mug or your bowl or whatever you've got. You're going to grab just a normal pencil and lightly, because watercolor is transparent, uh, you're going to trace around your mug. Thank you. Your mug to make a little, little circle. Now you can do it lightly. Uh, I would prefer to do it dark myself, but uh, <laughs> well, you can always lighten it up with an eraser. It's your painting. You can do what you want. Yeah. Josiah Aitchison. That's hey, nice. Hey, welcome. All right. Set that off to the side. Okay, this next part, tape me, is going to be pretty good. So what we want to do here is uh, on the reference sheet, step-by-step -step sheet, you'll notice that we put some tape down. And uh, in the step-by-step -step sheet, uh, she stops, she puts tape just in this little, on this little section. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go all the way across because we want a nice, well, we're gonna put one piece of tape under the moon and then we're gonna put these pieces of tape on either side. We're gonna put one under the moon, that way we get a nice crisp line under our moon. I'll show you, just follow along. Don't worry, let me take you there. All right, get some tape here. Now, I was practicing this earlier today, 
and uh, this tape seems thin, it doesn't matter. I was practicing this earlier today, and I noticed that when, <laughs> when I pulled the tape up and then I went to paint, I could see where the tape had been, because I have to paint over where the tape had been. And so I heard that before you put the tape down, if you like touch it against your pants or something to kind of dull the adhesive, when you take it off the paper, uh, it won't, you have less chance of it pulling up your paper. So <laughs> that's what I was just doing. <laughs> Don't worry about it. That should have been a full screen. <laughs> so. We're gonna put this on our moon about a third of the way down where we want our moon to meet the Earth or whatever planet you decide this is gonna be. Oh, that's the ticket. That is the ticket. Great. Now, we're gonna put a couple other pieces of tape on here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put one on this side of the moon. Yep. Yeah, just like that. Uh-huh. And then we're gonna put one just like this on the other side of the moon going across. Yeah. Is it supposed to go over to the line or just to it? Just the top tape just goes to the line. The bottom tape goes over. Oh yeah. Uh, no. Not that they know of. It's Missouri. <laughs> Everyone's related. Not. No, I'm not. <laughs> not yet. A lot of people get uh, related in Missouri somehow. There's just a big circuit of people related here. Who knows? Well, you and I are related, yeah, Keenan. Through several several marriages. several marriages. Probably a divorce. Okay. So this is, sorry, get this in frame here. This is what you want your end product to look like when we're done taping things up. You want uh, your circle right here with a one third, a piece of tape, one third the way down. Mine's more like a quarter of the way. It doesn't matter, fractions are, are hard. Uh, down here across your moon, and then you want a piece of tape just above that, but without it taping across the moon. Yeah, and then we need one more piece of tape. Where's the tape? Sorry. Taylor? Okay. <laughs> and this piece of tape, this piece of tape we probably should have put down first because we're going to take this piece of tape off first. So I want this diagonal strip to go under it. So I'm just gonna lift that up a bit. I've got all kinds of tape on my paper. Yeah, you do. Uh, <laughs> So this piece of tape, this is gonna make the, the uh, diagonal angle here, okay? So there's no, you don't need to get a compass out or a protractor, just uh, kinda whatever you think would be aesthetically pleasing. Give it a nice little angle. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sure, that's the ticket. And then put that back, okay, okay. Look at this is coming along nice. We've got nice, nicely composed picture probably. Thank you. Too much dog hair on your pants. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, now that we, uh, well, I'll wait for you guys. While they're taping, I'll explain what colors we're gonna use, okay? The colors for today are orchid, space blue, pine green. Why are you laughing, Nicole? No reason. I have something on my face. Yeah. Looks good. <laughs> I was born this way. My <laughs> <laughs> lady Gaga. Ayo. Okay. So those are the colors we're going to use. Um, I'm just going to squirt some in my palette here. Maybe I'll move my palette down. Wow. You're probably not going to be able to see that. Keenan, you want to share with me? And then Taylor, Yan Yon. Thanks. Yeah. Here. And I've already got colors in mine. Molly Kareen Barton, hi Broccolicious. Hello. Wow. Wow. Hey. 
She's That's my wife. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Beth, thank you for being here in for to support us. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Beth. Okay, so to do this painting, um, we suggest a round six and a round two. Uh, I've done this painting a couple times to prepare. I actually prefer around 10 for this one because there's a lot of <laughs> space to cover. Big chungus. So I got the old big chungus out here and uh, that's why I'm using, but around six will work just fine. I'm just maybe less patient. And then also around two for the details like the birds and the trees. I actually think that's a good call. Sarah did a good thing, I guess. Uh, the round two is a good call for those trees and the birds. So that's what I'm doing. But um, really, you just need a big brush and a little brush. Taylor, do you need a paper towel? You just need a big brush and a little brush. <laughs> All right. Orchid for the purple is purple thick, per perfect. Wow. My brushes, unfortunately, don't have names because I'm not that I'm not that exciting. Okay, so what big, we're big chungus. Well, yes, ma'am. Which one up top? No, not always. If it's, if it's the preview, keep talking. Okay. <laughs> They're working out tef it's technical it's difficulties the on the side. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do this moon. Okay? Now, on the moon, uh, it's a mixture of blue and purple and... and uh, orchid. I'm sorry. Space blue, orchid, uh, no green. But we're just going to mix a couple of those colors together. And we want to use a lot of water here. And uh, Sarah's just using the wet-on-wet wet technique. So one thing that I think is good is uh, taking my brush dipping it in the water here, and uh, getting my moon moist. I'm gonna be moisturizing this moon. And when I get right to the edges here, I'm just gonna moisturize it a bit. And I'm not gonna do the whole thing all at once, I'm just gonna do a little chunk here. And I'm gonna come over to my palette, and uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of this orchid, and I'm gonna throw a skosh of this blue in here, and get a, just a nice, a nice purple, okay? And then I'm gonna take a, a nice paint-heavy brush, and I'm going to start dropping color in to that moist part of the moon. It's a Pink Floyd album that didn't sell very well, the moist side of the moon. Nobody? I didn't get it. No, I didn't get it. Sorry. Okay. I knew you'd be looking for help, but I had nothing. Yeah, well, it's nothing okay. And so I'm just going to add some color in there, just like that. Just kind of drop it in. And I think I'm going to add a little bit more orchid to this pink and make like a lighter purple. And throw that in there. Kind of give it some color, some color change there. Spread it around a little bit. Dip my brush into water. I'm not going to grab any more paint, and I'm just going to keep spreading this out a little bit. Uh, in the reference photo, you can see that Sarah leaves some white space, kind of as highlights, which I think is a really nice touch. I guess, uh, you know, she knows what she's doing. So I'm going to try and leave some white spaces in there. Now I've got a nice pink purple side to my moon. So I'm going to wet my brush down, rinse the color out. I want mostly just water. It's okay if it's tinted pink a little bit. And I'm going to moisten the other side of my moon. Yeah, just gonna moisten it up. And it's okay if it touches the color. You see, I get some color right there that when I touched it, bled into it. That looks pretty dang cool. So we're not mad about that. Not yet. All right, and we're just gonna keep moistening this left side of the moon. All right, there we go. We've got it nice and moist. We got some colors bleeding and that's cool. And right now what I wanna do is I wanna get some of this blue, some big blue, maybe just a hint, just a hint of the orchid. And I'm gonna start dropping that in the other side of my moon. Yeah. And this is how I'm choosing to do it. This moon is very loose. It's, you can put the colors wherever you want it. Uh, this is just how I'm choosing to do it, going a little rogue, um, but honestly it's, a pretty abstract moon, so nobody can tell you you're wrong in this in this specific thing <laughs> today. So I'll throw some of that in there, and mix up some more purple. I'm sorry, Nicole. Would you like to share with the class? Marcy said, "Please stop saying moist." I. Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> this is who I am. Now I'm gonna take some drops of water and I'm just gonna touch them to different spaces on my moon. And that'll give me some, some nice texture, as we say in the watercolor world. Yeah. Color. Yeah, get some color in there, Keenan. Oh my gosh, these are some good looking moons. 
Yeah. Mine's gonna have a rift right in the middle of it. Well, that's really cool. Thanks. Thanks. You're cool. You're, you're cool, cool and your painting is cool. You're pretty cool. <laughs> you're pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool, yeah. All right. Oh, that's dark. That's nice. Ooh, maybe I should get my own. Debbie, you do get some water and paint with us. Tanya, I'm glad that you like that I'm left-handed. It's come in handy a couple times. I'm statistically more likely to become president, so that could come in handy. Vote Brock, 2020. 17. It's all right. It's so close to my foot. Yeah, you're all right. It happens to everybody, okay. <laughs> usually. I think we're, oh, it says replay? Wait. No, we're good. Can uh, they still hear us? Yeah, they should be able to still hear us. I think we're good. Yeah, because the, uh, the sling is set up in a different spot. Sorry, everybody. We have a power strip under our table, and Taylor accidentally kicked it. So it turned one of our cameras off, but we're fixing it yeah, right now. It's fine, because our moons are going to need all the time in the world to dry, because they're you, uh, Moist. To the top? Let me know if this is clear. I'll leave it there, please. Sorry, Keenan's fixing my camera. Can't move. Now, what we're going to do now, once you have a moon that you like, uh, we're going to set the moon off to the side. Yeah. We're going to set the moon off to the side, and we're going to practice um, doing some value changes from light to dark, because we're going to use that when we make our landscape. So we'll practice that a little bit as it dries. Okay, so take your moons. Taylor, that's nice. Keenan, are you done? I'm done. Take your moon, set it gently off to the side. It's quite wet, so you're not going to want to tilt it too much. And uh, get a practice sheet out. Okay, get a practice sheet. An, a spare sheet of paper. We're going to practice a little bit of... The overhead doesn't work. The overhead can? Drag it from the side over to the top. Yep. Okay. So if you look in the if you look at the step out sheet, which our overhead apparently is not engaged the at the moment. Oh, is it, we got it now? Okay. The front one is not. <laughs> Damp, engorged, gross. Okay. If you look at the step out sheet now, uh, the bottom part here is a value change from dark in this corner to light. It fades out. So what we're going to do on this paper is just we're going to paint some squares dark and then we're going to show, I'm going to show how to lighten those out so that they kind of fade into, into a light color. All right, and we'll do that while our moon is drying. See this, there's a lot of drying in this one so that's why I spread the, uh, the warm ups out. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. So for this warm up, get a nice damp brush. Okay. Yeah. Pick a color. Ooh. I kind of like this greeny turquoise I color. Like this really a lot. Right yeah, there. no, this is good. And I kind of want it to be pretty dark. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I like that better. Well, thank you. I mixed it myself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you, uh, thank you. Okay. Now, what I want everyone to do, <laughs> more Keenan. You're right. More Keenan David Spruill. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to paint this little line right here. Now, I want you to do better than I do because I'm sure my value change won't be super great, but still it's the, 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 the idea is correct. And then get your brush wet, don't get any more paint, and just start dragging the color that you already put down across the page. Keep rinsing your brush and moving down the page as you go. And in theory, this should be getting lighter. I feel like I've kind of reached a plateau of color, but uh, no, it's getting, uh, yeah, it's getting lighter. Boom, boom. And just like that, I've got great color that fades into lighter color. That looks like a sound wave, kinda. Thanks, I play a lot of Overwatch. I'm a Lucio main. All right, let's try it again. Oh, wrong brush. Let's try it again with a different color. We've got time, because I'm sure most of our moons are damp engorged, Mine's moist, back. wet. So I'm gonna get some of this, what is this, pine green? What do we got here? Pine green. Yeah, I'm gonna get some pine green, just straight pine green with a wet brush. And I'm going to make an angle shape, kind of like we're gonna do 
in the landscape with this pine green. Okay, just like that. Kind of like a backwards seven with a really tall head. Tail? Sure, no, because the tail would be the bottom part. And then just like we did on the top one, we're gonna get our brushes wet, not gonna grab any more color, and we're just gonna start working the paint that we've already laid down into the white space. Now this is a little trickier than the, the previous example because there's an angle there. So what we wanna do is try to work out that angle and fade the angle down. So that's why we're practicing it now before we go on to our, our main picture. We want our, we want our main painting to be something that mom's proud of and that we can hang on the refrigerator and that she tells all of her bridge friends about when they come over to play. Bridge. That's not my mom, but I'm sure some of you have moms like that. I hope. Okay, oh my gosh. It's disgusting how good I've gotten at this. I don't know. I have a question. I've said it What's up, Taylor? Why did, see how there's a line there? That is a hard line. Yeah. That's a great question. <laughs> If anybody knows. <laughs> it, dried, it dried before you had a chance to. But I just put it down. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know science. I just know that. Okay. Maybe it wasn't moist enough. Okay. I don't know. I'm gonna do I don't want to lie to you because someone will call me out. I can make something up, but someone would know. Add color over it and overlap it. Well, see, I tried that too. <laughs> I don't know if it's just. Just use a grip of water. I think it was the water. Yeah. The answer is always water probably. Yeah. I don't know. I do the spreadsheets. Most days. <laughs> Some days. Oh, yes. They want to see Keenan and Taylor's moons. And, well, on camera? No, I'm just kidding. We uh, yeah. Check. We gotta do a check. We'll do a check in after we're done with this little, uh, this little warm up here. Hey, um, Keenan. Yes, ma'am. Your daughters were more excited to see me than you and Brock. <laughs> I'm not surprised. They're easy to switch people that they love. Ooh. That hurts. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Also, if you, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. if you want to try this out while we're practicing, what we're going to do with our little angled part is we're going to get it super wet and we're going to try to do some drips. I'm kind of running out of page space, but it'll work. You get li lots of nice water on there with some color. You take your paper and you just hit it down a bit and that will get you the drips that we see in the step out sheet. Yeah. I'm not sure if I did uh, that part right, but it's fine. Okay. Salt. I think salt in the moon, salt on the moon would probably look pretty cool. We're not using salt, but uh, YOLO, right? So, YOPO. No, that doesn't work. You only paint once, you paint more than once. Um, so, okay. We've done some good warm ups here. I'm particularly proud of the textures I've got in my value changes. And, uh, yeah, Sarah should probably watch out because I'm getting pretty good. Let's, <laughs> let's bring our moons back into focus here and we'll do a quick check-in. <laughs> okay, so we've got Taylor's moon right here, which uh, I'm in no position to give any feedback on, so it looks great, it did really good. <laughs> I'd like, I, I couldn't tell you what to do better because I'd have no idea, but look everybody, she made a nice moon. So good. Yeah, the white spots too. Yeah, white spots, nice textures here, pretty colors. Do you mind if I paint on this a little bit? I'm just kidding. <laughs> you gotta paint on it first. No, yeah, no. Okay, Keenan's moon. I've got, a, I've got a rift in mine. Molly suge su suggests, suggests scrunching a paper towel and dabbing it on the wet spots gives it a cool texture. Oh, Chad's with us too. Also, Chad had some ranch today. Molly. Okay. Great Ke suggestion. Thank you, Molly. Keenan's moon also looks really great. You almost, there's like a canyon. This could be Mars. Okay, Mars has one of the largest, largest canyons Oddly enough. Uh, that we've observed so far. Valles Marineris, I believe is what it's called. Yep, Enormous. It could actually span across the entire United States, which makes it something like 1,800 miles across. That's so perhaps you took inspiration from I Mars. I did. Yeah. Which would make Mars. this little bump here Olympus Mons, uh -huh. tallest observed mountain in the Mars. universe that we know of. Probably not the tallest ever, but anyway, good job, Keenan. Grammatically correct. Brock just told me. <laughs> so uh, my my uh, my moon here. I've got some fuzzy edges and it's leaking a little bit. That's fine. It's on fire. I want it to dry faster, so I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to get it really dry on the paper towel, and I'm actually going to suck up some of this water in the corner. Yeah, because I'm getting impatient and I want to move on. 
You could use a paper towel. Well, I could, but I could also use this brush. And you know what? It makes me feel like an artist. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, David. So now what we're going to do is take off the bottom piece of Ooh. tape. Gosh, I could not remember that word. We're going to take off the bottom piece of tape. How would you draw a ring around this? That's a great question for an artist. Nicole? I focusing on too many things. <laughs> what? It's all right. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You just focus on those cameras. I just noticed that Helen was watching. Helen is probably one of my favorite people on earth. So, Helen, glad you're here. My paper is Colby. Tearing so bad. Did you touch it to your pants first? Yes, I did actually. Maybe your pants. I are normally don't listen to you, but sticky. I listened to that tip. Okay. So I've got a pretty crisp line here. I'm feeling pretty good about this moon. Now, what we're gonna do now is just like we practiced. Sorry. <laughs> it's bad. It's all right, keep going. Do it on the other side then. Oh my gosh. You're gonna paint that, it's okay. I'll paint it, it's fine. It's not okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, just like in our warm up, just like we did right here, except we're gonna use space blue, pretty much just straight space blue, and we're going to Space blue, the outline, and then using our water, value change it from light to dark, just like we did in our warm up not too long ago. So get your, dab your brush a little bit, get a little damp. Just pick up a bunch of C, I'm sorry, space blue. Keenan, our space blue has been contaminated, but look how pretty this purple color is. I mean, that's like royal purple. That is pretty. <laughs> Keenan is just murdering his paper right now. It is so artistic. So I'm going to put some more space blue down, Keenan, because our space blue got contaminated. Okay. okay. I don't care about that. I don't care about that. Who was that? <laughs> so you're going to get your brush a little bit wet. Just pick up a bunch of this space blue. And we're going to start, uh, start putting color in. Right here, and it doesn't have to be super dark for the first layer because we're gonna, we, can put, we can put several layers on it. But what I don't want is hard lines, and if you let it sit too long, you'll get hard lines. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do several layers where I just kind of put it in and then blend it down, and that'll help, hopefully, I won't get hard, hard lines where, my, where I put brush strokes. We're gonna try. I'm not guaranteeing it's gonna work, but uh, that's the idea. All right, get some more paint on here. I'm gonna go over this again to darken it up a bit. Now, if your moon wasn't completely dry, you're gonna get some of your, your blue bleeding into it. And yeah, it's fine, it's whatever. It's a watercolor painting. It's gonna look good. Your, your mom's still gonna be proud. Mine's gonna be torn. Keenan, you have texture. I have so yeah, much texture. texture. You can't pay for that texture, Keenan. Did you ask me how to make a ring? Was that well, yeah, but that was like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Sorry. I will show you after. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll do it with a doctor. That's a good idea. So I'm adding more, more of this blue, just straight blue color in there. You can kind of see on my paper where I took the tape up. I guess I didn't do a good enough job of, of hedging my risks there. So I've got some weird texture, but it's okay. It's okay. It looks cool. How far do we fill in? You fill in as much as you want. You kind of want this to be like a rough triangle shape, but uh, it's your painting, so. Lots of space blue. Uh, Jennifer, I'm adding a significant amount of space blue, like just the straight up paint in the darker areas because I want, I want there to be a good contrast between the light and the dark. But then for the light part, I'm just using water to spread some of that paint down south. Yeah. <laughs> I do like to live life on the edge. Not as cool as when Sarah says it. No one reacts. <laughs> yeah, well, someone, someone commented and I had to I just say it, but I mean, I can't. I'm not that guy. I'm gonna throw a little purple in there. 
Keenan, you do what you need to to make you happy. I support you. Like I said, this is an abstract piece, so whatever you do, if someone says it looks weird, you say, it's an abstract piece of art. It's supposed to look weird. It's just my defense for most things in life. I'm an abstract dude. I'm supposed to look kind of weird. Okay. I'm getting kind of the point where I just want to get my drops going and then move on to our next warm up. So I'm going to make this, this left edge pretty moist. I mean, I want it to be, I want drops to, to fall. So I'm going to make it, I want a good amount of water there. And then I'm going to pick this guy up and just give it a couple. Yeah. Sometimes you got to help it out a bit and give it a path to go down. So that's what I'm going to do here. Oh, baby. Yeah. Nice. Oh, look at that. That is sweet. Well, thanks. Thanks. That looks so good. Thanks. It's my third time doing this painting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to set these off to the side, and we're going to bring our warm-up sheets back. This. Hey, Nicole, do you want to try getting some other camera? <laughs> Nicole, you're doing a fantastic job. You are doing a great job. I, 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 I try to go every two to three minutes. Okay. It's all good. So now what we're going to do on our warm-up sheet is we're going to practice painting some happy little trees. Uh, but, but, but more than anything, what we want to practice is getting three distinct values of trees. We want a light, a medium, and a dark tree. This is going to add a lot of depth to your cute thicket of trees that's accompanying your moon. So the way that I like to do this, and I'm going to bring my palette into view a little bit here, because I think this is, this is more palette work than anything, um, is I'm going to get my brush kind of moist. I've got a little round two here. Nicole is awesome. OK. Wow, this round two. Keenan, is this the round two that you used to? Is it brand new? I used the other end. So no, it's either brand new and unused. No, you 100% used this to paint in concrete. No, I did not. Yes, you did. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it doesn't sound like me. Why did you use this to paint? It doesn't sound like something I would do. Uh, your initials are in the concrete. <laughs> so, that doesn't sound like I would do that. Well, it weren't me. <laughs> Classic. No, I'll Not make this. Right here. Do oh, you? Right That's right. a line or two. It doesn't matter. This guy will work. Okay. And my palette in view. Oh man, this might work. So for my three values, the values that I'm going to, Jolene Aitchison. Hello. Welcome, Mama Aitchison. Wow. Okay. So for my three values, my first value, I'm just going to have be just straight paint. Okay. That's what this is going to be right here. I'm just going to pull from the paint and that's going to be my tree color. That's my dark value. Now, my medium value is I'm going to put brush, <laughs> I'm going to put water on my brush and I'm just going to take without rinsing it completely. I just want to get it wet. So the paint that's already on it, get it wet and then come back. And I'm actually might add a little bit more water to that little dot right there. Nicole, can they see my palette? Okay. Yep. Yeah. I want to add water to this until it gets lighter. Yeah. And then for my third one, I want it to be almost transparent. So I'm going to rinse my brush off pretty well. And I'm just going to dab my light, my medium, and I'm going to come over here and you should bear, I mean, it's going to look just like dirty water. I mean, you, I want you to be able to barely see the color in the paint. So if you see on my palette here, I've got my very light values, I've got my medium values, and then I just have the paint from the pile as a dark value. And this is very important because it gives, it adds that depth to your trees. It makes it look like there's trees far off because they're very light. And then it makes it look like there's trees in the middle that are medium, um, toned, sh shaded, hued, valued. colored, valued, valued we're medium changing, valued. We're changing the value. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, the dark trees are the ones that are closest to you in theory, right? Uh, because you can see them better. Jerome Barton. Hello. Well, family's all here. Thanks pops. Okay. Interesting. Is Keenan a veteran? Yes. Keenan is a veteran. Okay. So now that we've got our three colors, can we have that liner too? 
This round two was used to paint someone's initials in concrete. I don't know whose initials, KJA, uh, but it's no longer useful. I could be anybody. So I've got this liner too. I'm gonna rinse it off real well. And I'm gonna start with this really light color. And like I said, it's gonna look super light and you're gonna think that's too light. But watch as we paint some trees on here and it's still gonna look light. But then as we add darker trees, it's gonna look really cool. So for the trees, I paint my little trunk. Can they see that? It's light. You might not even be able to see this. That's how light it is, but that's, that's correct. That's how good he is. That's how good I am. And it's only his third time. Only my third time. And then what I do is with my brush is I make lines going back and forth that kind of gently touch. I just dab, a little bit of dab in here. Dabble, dabble, do. Yep. Get a little bit more here. And it's, I mean, you guys have seen a tree. I don't really need to tell you what shape a tree is, right? But I mean, I'm going to anyway. You just want like a gentle cone shape going down. So just some little dabs going down and you've got yourself a little tree. Some would say triangle. Yeah, sure. Now to get the medium value tree, you dip your brush in the medium value pile. That's the same thing. We'll put it right next to our light value tree. And this medium I think might even be a little too dark. I like my medium to not be super dark, but, but it's okay. It's okay. And then, uh, <laughs> I didn't know you were a lefty. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then, oh, he's been my dad for 27 years. I don't know. Roughly. Roughly. We played sports together. I don't, I don't know. Okay. And then, for a dark tree, I'm just going to dip my brush in the pile that's just straight from the paint. And I'll make this guy the biggest tree of them all. Yeah. Pro tip, don't put your project next to your bottle of water. And this is a big tree. I'm gonna have to go back in for seconds on paint. Here we go. Make sure you leave lots of white space in these trees. I mean, that's what I think looks good. You do what you want. But here I've got three trees and you can see my dark tree, which is my near tree, my medium value tree, which is my medium distanced tree, and my light value tree. And uh, while these are drying, I think we'll, we've probably got another minute or two. Just uh, practice putting some trees in the, uh, some happy little trees in your little forest here. Every tree needs a friend. Yeah. You're doing great. Oh, thanks. Was that a comment or did you, are you just, do you think I'm doing great personally? Both. Oh, thank you. Brown noser. We're just going to throw some more tree. Whoa. Speaking of I'm tan. <laughs> I'm tan. <laughs> I feel like we should turn the camera to see Nicole. We wouldn't be able to. So we're going to add more trees in our little forest here. Pretend that didn't happen. The forest? Yep. That's a nice forest. Well, thanks. Gosh, I need to get a liner. So uh, we, we have business cards because we're a business and Someone had the idea to make them on watercolor paper and we painted our business cards, but I painted trees on mine and I didn't want to give it away. And so I just kept it. I kept it. I would show people my business card and say, look, I made this, but then I didn't actually give it to them. I gave them the boring ones. So sorry to everyone that met me and didn't get the tree card. So again, also, if you met him recently, welcome. Cause it's a new, it's a new, it's a new thing. They probably just met you for the first time and they'd never heard of it. Oh, yeah, sure, 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 sure. You just made those business cards. Yeah, I did, okay. <laughs> We're continuing on my little practice forest here while our earth dries. I'm gonna put a, big, a darker tree in front of my far away tree. And you'll notice that my, my light tree wasn't completely dry. And so my trees are kind of melting together. If that's what you're into, great. If not, make sure that your background trees are dry before you paint foreground trees or they will melt together. They'll do water things. We'll do things that water does. Become water. Uh, someone asked, how do, uh, how do you layer? I start with the farthest back trees, the light, lightest trees. So what we're going to do is we'll do the background first and then, and then mid ground, if that's even a word, and then foreground. Yeah, light to dark. That would have been easier. Atmospheric perspective. Thanks, Gloria. I would have never guessed that. Is there a quick way for them to dry? Uh, well, it's like sometimes, 
I've got a two-year-old daughter, and when I give her hot food, she'll just sit there and blow on it. When I give her cold food, she does the same thing. But uh, you could try that. Just give it a little, <sighs> maybe a blow dryer, uh, I don't know. But if it's puddling, be careful because yeah. it'll, it'll push the water color around. A toaster oven, but don't leave it in too long. It'll catch on fire. We have another question. How do you, can you answer this? How do you decide how to balance the number of trees in background and foreground? That's a great question. I don't have a scientific method. Um, do you have an artistic method? I don't have that either. So I would say just... Start with fewer and you can always add more in. It's harder to take trees away once you've planted them. That's my advice. Did you say really? No, I said good Oh, I said really? <laughs> like that's the best you've got? Also, other people were saying heat guns. Heat guns? Heat guns are super cool. All right, so I painted a bunch of little happy trees here. But if you look, and, and I mean, maybe you can't see it, but in my mind, on my paper here, it clearly looks like there's a hierarchy to the trees here. You got this big papa tree, several little, little baby trees in the very background, and maybe some teenager trees, a mama tree right here to the left. Like, they're clearly of different depths. Okay, let's move on to our world. Our world, yeah, our main attraction. What? I'm on my own. Why? Just because I guess it's um, hard to see. No, when you're oh, because oh, you're. Sorry, Taylor. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> a lot less colors over here. <laughs> Can they still see the palette? Oh, I think it was more this. Like this angle, maybe, was the problem. No, I think because you're bringing your left okay. arm over. You just, your, your okay. You just. Okay. You need to stop that. Okay, uh, am I a musician and a painter? I dabble in both, but I'm not fantastic at either. Okay, let's bring our paintings back into focus, and we'll do a quick check-in before we move on to the trees. Keenan, What's up? Can you uh, bring your painting into focus? Thank you. So here's Keenan's. There's some things I really like about Keenan's. I like that he went rogue and added some other colors. I like that his moon was dry, so he didn't get a lot of bleeding. I'm really jealous of that because I've got some severe bleeding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he clearly likes to splatter things on his paper. So good job, Keenan. It's the stars? Yeah, okay, I can get Why behind that. Purple stars are green. I redact my insult. Uh, I also love your paper tearing texture. It actually looks pretty cool. It, is it actually does. Yeah, yeah, not gonna lie, that's cool. Great. Good job. Taylor. Groovy. Groovy. Taylor, yours looks good. You did have a little bit of bleeding, but yeah. it's not as severe as it's mine. <laughs> a good value change there, from dark to light. Classic. Some nice drip spots here. Yeah, perfect foundation for some trees. Okay, now let's uh, gently take our tape off. I don't want to. Oh, those are some crisp lines. Crisp-ish, I mean. How did your tape come off so easily? Well, I didn't put it on with I'm a jackhammer. I'm afraid to take mine off. Do you need some help, little guy? <laughs> little buddy? I didn't want mine to come off. Oh, yeah, crisp. Oh. Leave it, keep it, keep it, keep it. Keep ripping it. It'll look so cool on the bottom side. Nope. All right. Is that in frame? Can you see that, Nicole? It looks way better on camera, which is nice. <laughs> Colby. Colby. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, okay. Let's do some trees. Nicole, can you focus up? We're trying, we're trying to paint here. This is very serious. <laughs> Take it off, Keenan. That's the comment. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's a small moon. Oh, I was supposed to say, that's no moon. It's from Star Wars. I think that's what she was going that's for. That's no moon. Okay. Be gentle with yourself. Some great comments. Okay, so trees. Trees, trees, trees. Oh, man, my moon bled a bit. 
just a baby bit there. That's okay. Yeah, it's abs trees. No, it's abstract. I'm going to embrace it. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to start with our light trees. So again, you want the color to be almost imperceivable on your palette. Like it should just look like a drop of water that you add. It should look like dirty paint water. Like you want it to be very light. And we're just going to start throwing some trees up here. And they're going to be very light, but don't worry. That's, that's on purpose. That'll add atmospheric density persuasion. Atmospheric, atmospheric perspective. To your painting. Perception? Yeah, now I don't remember. Colby. Now, when I painted this, Sarah said, now you're going to want, your brain is going to want to paint these at equal distances apart. So before you even get started, you can paint them like every, what's this, what, that's about a centimeter. You can paint them about every centimeter apart if you want to. But just realize that in the forest, the trees aren't spaced equidistant from each other equidistant from each other. So feel free to add some variance in your tree spacing. Sorry. Did you take all of my... <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I'm trying to teach the fine folk stuff. You're just swiping my water. Taylor set me up with a pretty good palette over here. <laughs> You're welcome. Got all kinds of different values of each color. It's actually really great. Well, all she's doing is stealing my paint, so. You stole mine. It's not a contest. All right. And you want your trees to be of varying heights and widths. Trees are just like people, they come in all shapes and sizes. Some of them are better for hugging. Nicole, you're not laughing at as many of my jokes as I thought you would be. She hasn't slept in two days. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I give you a pass then. You're always laughing. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, okay. That's true too. You're not wrong, I guess. I always laugh at you. You know that equal distance thing you were in? Yep. Uh, did you do it? Yeah. It's like you don't even think about it. That's what Sarah was saying. I was like, no, Sarah, you're wrong. Sure enough, each of my trees was like a perfect centimeter apart. Uh, so we do not have a store in Utah. We have one store. It's in Hamilton, Missouri. And, uh, but we do sell things online. Mm -hmm. Couple more of these light trees. if you read it. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I can't find it. <laughs> Didn't mean it. <laughs> Please don't ever say Missouri again. Sorry, says. <laughs> can't stop, won't stop. Thanks, Dave. All right, I think I'm going to put one more light tree and I'm going to move on to medium value trees. So everyone, hold on to your butts. Mine are becoming best friends. Terry says, I have to leave, but you're doing amazing. Hope to see you again soon. Oh, how dang kind. Thanks, Terry. So nice, Thanks, Terry. Terry Bear. Good, great person. Okay, so uh, if, you, if you see my painting, and I'm not suggesting that my painting is, you know, the best example. However, I think it follows a step-by-step -step sheet. I have a nice layer here of very light trees, okay? Now, I'm going to give them just a second to dry. We're not going to wait a long time, but as I put my medium trees on there. I don't want them to bleed into my light trees. Do you have something to say, Nicole? Okay. Just give me that look. My trees are just the worst. Keenan. <laughs> Keenan, I'm sorry. Are you, you an, are you I'm an, not comparing. Are you an oath breaker? No. Are you being kind to yourself? Yes, I am. I'm saying my trees are the worst, not me. <laughs> 
I, you broke the I'm system. Great. You're great and your trees are great. You should be gall dang proud. Thanks, guy. Okay. So most of my most of my light value trees are dry. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Keenan, can I see your painting really quickly? These are Keenan's trees. And Keenan's trees are fine. The thing about Keenan's trees is, and I don't know if he was just going rogue on purpose or not, it looks like you started with light valued trees. Yeah. But these are incredibly dark valued trees. Yeah, I liked the dark ones. I should have gone light. Well, how about this? But here's the thing, I'm trying to figure out the technique and I can't do oh, it sure, sure, sure. light. I, I want better shape. I don't really care about the value. I'm just working on getting the shape right. Well, it's your painting. If you love it, I love it. Thanks, I love it. Well, I don't, I don't love it. That's why I'm working on the shape. I'm trying to figure it out. We're all friends here. What were you going to say? You're great, and your trees are great. Taylor? <laughs> Taylor? <laughs> These are Taylor's little trees? They're so little. <laughs> well, that's a moon right there, so I mean... Well, atmospheric perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keenan, treat yourself, <laughs> treat yourself. Molly. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, no, Taylor, I think your trees have some great shape and they're not equally spaced, kind of. And uh, yeah, got some nice light values there. Okay, yeah, practice paper for shape. Thanks, Heidi. What's she saying? Oh no, she has a very fascinating last name. Okay, <sighs> moving right along. We're gonna now put some medium medium value trees in. So same process as the light value trees. If your light value trees are still wet though, they're gonna bleed. So please be aware of that. So I'm gonna dip my brush in the water, get it moist. I'm gonna hit up this medium pile here, the medium paint water, and I'm gonna start same technique on my paper. And you want the trees to overlap. I'm not discouraging overlapping trees. I'm just saying if you overlap them before the light ones are dry, they'll bleed. And I'm just gonna start putting in some branches here. Just some happy little branches right over the top of my light trees. Keenan and Taylor YouTube says great trees. Thank you. Do they say anything about my trees? No. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Also, Keenan is really quiet when he paints. That is true. I'm He's concentrating. Focusing. I've got to focus. There's nothing for me to read over here, so. Nate Fraley? Good to see you, Nate. <laughs> Putting in these medium value trees. And we've got a couple medium value trees. You can already see the light value trees being pushed into the background. Can't see my trees, too light, perfect. perfect. It should be the essence of a tree. It's like when you drink LaCroix water. It's like the taste, the flavor's there. You can't taste it, but you know it's there in your soul. That's what these trees are. In your soul. In your, in your bones. Cecilia says Brocker trees are great. Thank you. Finally, the appreciation I have been yearning for. I do these lives so that people tell me how great I am at painting, and it just hurts when nobody says it. Brock, you're great at painting. Thanks, Keen Annie. No. <laughs> <laughs> Keenan, or I'm sorry, Nicole, do you have any facts about trees? You're the new Keenan. Wow, throw that at me. <laughs> trees mainly stay on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, geez, we'll remember that one. <laughs> oh, shoot. Hedgehogs mainly stay on the ground. <sighs> that was the best fact that was ever facted. I love that most of the conversation, at least on Facebook, is revolving around how bad, how terrible moist is as a word. <laughs> it's not that bad. Moist chocolate cake. Oh, the moistest. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I'm Cool. What? Cool. About pine cones, which I guess kind of about trees. Yeah, sure. Baby pine trees. Pine cones have genders. Wow. Like almonds? What? Like peppers. How do you tell the difference? Let them out into the wild? <laughs> Whoa, we have some Cub Scouts watching. Nice. Shout out to Pack 50. 
Pack 50. What's up, Pack 50? What pack were we? Dang. 96? Mm, 97. No. Nope. nope, 96. No. Nope. I'm pretty sure. Oh, and Gallatin. I'll tell you why later. 1837. We're scouts ourselves. Keenan's yeah. an Eagle Scout. Eagle Scout. I was only a Life Scout. I was a Girl Scout. Wow. I love the cookies. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is the most demeaning wow I've ever heard you say. Wow! <laughs> you <laughs> Well, you weren't anyway. <laughs> <sighs> Welcome, <laughs> Girl Scouts. Thank you. Yeah, I'm using a liner too because the round two, Keenan used it to put his initials into the. I, we have some. <laughs> KJA is fairly common. Keenan Jack Aitchison. I've known you for at least several years. We had some wet cement back here in the studio. They were doing some plumbing, and so Keenan used a round two. I. It was not that one. Well, you but, also used the same brush. No, I yes, used. It was the same brush. I picked the same one. Back to the trees, Keenan. I've been at the trees. Hey, oh. I realized that at one point someone asked to see my trees and I never finished a tree. Just this half tree over here. There were several trees there. Hi from the UK. I love the UK. Never been there, but I'm. 9 in the morning. Sure, I'd like it. Nice, that's dedication. You should probably get to bed, though, let's be honest. For your health. Nope. I, mean, I wouldn't normally encourage someone to ditch the live, but I mean, I just feel like you probably need to sleep. All right. I think I'm discovering a new way to do trees. <laughs> well, I'm going to move on to my dark trees. Should we do a check-in, a tree check-in? Keenan? Let's do it. Yeah, you guys can check out my new trees. These are Keenan's trees. And you know what? These trees just look like they're very friendly with one another, and that's okay. Like, these, this is a tree family that cares. In what scenario would trees not being friendly be not okay? <laughs> Have you ever seen Lord of the Rings? Because those trees got pretty violent and it wasn't okay. <laughs> My trees look more like United States trees where oh, oh, geez, sorry. they see each other but don't talk to each other. United States trees. Taylor? I'm, I'm finishing that last one. All right, Taylor, excellent trees. Your trees really do look like they're in the back. This reminds me of Charlie Brown's Christmas. So that's cool. Keenan is branching out with a new way to paint trees. <laughs> branching. Classic. Okay. <laughs> Very heavily wooded forest. <laughs> That's not actually a pun, but. Actually, I read that. What did she say? Yeah. All right. So now we're going to put our dark trees in. And the dark trees, I'm just going to take my brush so that it's damp. And I'm going to put it straight into the paint. <laughs> what? That is purple, not blue. Okay, well, I put my paint, my brush into the wrong color. Uh, Maria, you just need to focus on your painting. <laughs> Talking about my evenly spaced trees. No, but you're right. You're right, let's be honest. <laughs> Maria, way to be Maria. Calling me out, <sighs> but she's right. Yeah, she's not wrong. The truest criticisms hurt the most. My trees are evenly Glasses. spaced. Glasses. All right. Damp brush, moisten it up with some paint, <laughs> and start putting those, uh, those, those delicious foreground trees in there. I wonder how a fan, a fan brush would be useful for trees. Well, one of my favorite mentors, Sir Bobbert Ross, oh, yeah, yeah. told me uh, that a fan brush is his preferred tool for, a, for trees. But he paints with oil, not watercolor, so I don't, I don't know. And he's not around for me to ask him anymore. He's playing with his raccoons in the sky. I'm gonna grab a fan, because I actually like the look of this tree. Doesn't mind, I changed my mind. <laughs> okay. <sighs> oh, these dark trees are dark. These are some like middle school emo kid, heavy metal listening, all black wearing dark trees. Michael Cray. Michael Cray trees. All my trees are similar in height. We got some green over here. <laughs> a 
if you can't get your trees this dark, I am not a professional, but I'll tell you what I'm doing. Maybe it'll help. My brush is not, there's very little water and it's almost exclusively paint. Normally I wouldn't suggest doing that because uh, adding the water to the paint makes it creamier when you paint. But because I'm doing like s small little dots, I'm just going straight into the paint to get that really dark value. It's a semi-pro tip. Good movie. Actually, it's not very good. Fun fact about trees. Yes. It's difficult for me to paint. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow. Nicole got really excited. She's like, <laughs> she's like, share it with me first. I was like, I don't have to do it. <laughs> Did you say this was purple or is that green? That's like a purpley blue green. Don't put your paintbrush in it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you need more that was my green? Well, well, I don't know. I think I'm gonna put Uno Mas. We had someone else speaking Spanish earlier, so I don't know if there is anyone that speaks Spanish, but I'm gonna put Uno Mas Arbol for cheese. tree on my painting. That doesn't stand for cheese. Cheese is queso, bro, you know that. We've eaten enough Mexican food together. <laughs> Touche. Touche. I've got some thick tree stems. If your cat's trying to drink your rinse water, let her have it. Survival of the fittest. <laughs> this tree's a little crooked, but that's okay. Anna says that Sarah mixed which is also another thing you could do. Sarah mixed the blue with the green to make really dark green. Oh. So also mix. A, it's a beautiful green. green. Different shades. Someone said I needed some tall trees. They're all tall. All over six foot. <laughs> I don't know you'd say that one. There are people here. All right, well, I'm done with my dark trees. What, what time is it? How, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're slaying it. Okay, uh, let's do a dark tree check-in and then we'll go to the birds and uh, we'll call that a wrap. Bernadette? Well, that sounds like a pretty Latina name. <laughs> okay. Let's share our trees. I don't want to. Ahora vamos a compar compartir nuestras pinturas. Someone's gonna have to correct me on my Spanish. Vamos a mostrar las árboles que hemos pintado. Muy bien, gracias. Aquí tenemos unas, unos árboles muy bonitos. Están muy cerquita y muy verde. No, we have some pretty trees here. Uh, they're, they're nice and close, very green. Uh, just, wow, <laughs> wow. Some great texture. Thank you. I'm playing with different ways to paint it. What's that? No, I just broke it a little bit, so. Keep breaking our brushes, Keenan. <laughs> Think we're made of money over here? Well. But yeah, no, great work. Thank you. Taylor? Okay. Good tree <laughs> season. Sorry, no, I was reading the, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was reading the comments. <laughs> uh, sorry, Cassandra. I was reading the comments. I didn't, your trees are fantastic. Some good trees here. Really delightful. I like that you have one that kind of eclipses your moon. The new moon, as we call it. It eclipses the new moon. <laughs> Sorry, twilight jokes. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I don't have any, uh, any feedback. This is great, and I'm also not a professional painter, but everyone else can see your tree, so that's great. Yeah, those and trees are awesome. Moving right along. What happened to my trees? Well, you, you just, you did them differently, that's all. This is more of a deciduous forest, but we have more coniferous forests. I like coniferous better. Well, I also like coniferous better, which is why I paint coniferous. You hate my trees. But deciduous trees are very important in the production of oxygen in the United States. Let's move on to the birds. <laughs> Let's move on to the birds. Okay. So, for the birds, this is what's sitting out. Now, okay, I have some thoughts, and we talked about this in the beginning, but if you're just joining us, if you look at Sarah's, and she's a fantastic artist, her birds are not flying in the most efficient pattern. Now, when I painted this the first time, I painted my birds in a straight line because that's how birds fly 
when they're trying to conserve energy and actually do bird things. So uh, you are welcome to paint your birds in whatever manner you want. But I, for, as for me and my birds, we will stay in a straight line. Bible joke? No? <laughs> I got it. Okay. Yeah. I just ignored it. <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> so I'm going to take my liner. Oh, Suzanne. Dampen it. Don't encourage Brock. And I'm going to get some of this space blue. And, I mean, you've drawn pictures as a child. They're kind of like M shapes or W shapes. Because they're just the silhouettes of birds. We're not getting detailed here. So I'm just going to throw some little birdies in there. Yeah. And just like your trees, uh, you're welcome to add some lighter valued birds to give the atmospheric perspective. Perspective. Yeah. Yeah. How are we doing these birds? W's and V's and M's and things. Alphabet, huh? But make sure you do some lighter birds. Lighter birds last. Uh, somebody asked if I was a scientist. No. Uh, however, I had one of the most excellent biology teachers in high school that probably exists ever. And I'm sure he's not watching because I don't think he's into art. Uh, but his biology class got me through two different biology classes in college. Fantastic teacher. So he ingrained me with a love of science. Thank you, Mr. Vollmer. Also an excellent cross-country coach. I think their girls cross-country team won state six years in a row. So that's cool. Yeah. And then his daughter set the record for like the decathlon at KU. So just a lot of talents in that family. My birds are huge. <laughs> Do you have any tips and tricks for birds? I know you said M's and V's. And I don't. I'm not a great bird painter. I think my brush is too wet and it's making my birds much larger than I want them to be. <laughs> All your ducks in a row. Hey, I'm glad people are on the same page when it comes to birds. She even has some birds that go in front of her moon, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to try that. If I was a bird, I'd want to fly with the moon to my back. It's pretty sweet. Thank you, Bernadette. Gracias. Oh! She hasn't even seen your. Oh, you said you know, that they're large. Yeah, mine are huge. He's painting pterodactyls over there. Pterodactyls. I'm talking pteranodons. Pteranodons. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna pter you up with those things. Pter. <laughs> Never seen a pterodactyl. Preposterous. <laughs> Western Australia. Funny thing about Australia. Well, it's about New Zealand, I guess. So sorry about that. But uh, Sarah and I try to do uh, New Zealand accents all the time because we've decided, as everybody knows, that New Zealand accents are by far the cutest on the planet. <laughs> uh, but we did a New Zealand accent on Alive once, and they told us we sound like we were from South Africa. So uh, that's unfortunate, but that's what that made me think of. I want to hear it. Great nope. Story. <laughs> nope. Time to tell you. <laughs> yeah, cool story, bro. <laughs> all right. Well, oh, did you teach her how to do the slow pan? Uh, we can't. We only have three cameras now because you won't let us get a fourth. Hey, I forgot Where? Right there. <gasps> okay. <laughs> Nabil, I see you there. One of my good friends from Nicaragua. Aquí pintando con nosotros. I love that guy. He's like, he's like six foot five. He's like at least as tall as you are. Okay. <laughs> I'm just so happy that he's watching. And he speaks English, which is very fortunate. All right, so uh, yeah, I think we're just about done. What else do we have to do? Well, that's it. Details? Well, no. We've done all the steps. I have 10 steps here. Let's add a step. Draw moon circle, tape paper off, paint moon, start from the bottom, let dry, practice trees, peel moon tape off, paint ground, let dry, peel top tape, trees, birds. You added four steps to the six step, step action? <laughs> <laughs> that's so helpful. Well. Get another camera someday. Keenan, I like that. Keenan, I tell Keenan just to use his cell phone, but he won't do it. I'll do it right now. Let's connect to this Link Studio. Okay, no, let's, uh, we don't need to hold these nice people 
hostage any longer. We're going to show them our works and uh, front cam. Uh, we uh, uh, we we'll we could just show them like right here, too, or on the front cam. Shoot, I don't care. You're the videographer, not me. All right. Why don't we? Well, we could do the we do the side up top. Nope. Front cam. Okay, front cam. It is ready. Are we on the front cam? Here we go. Wow. <laughs> See how big my birds got? They're not that big. They're the size of the trees. <laughs> oh, they're huge. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, so these are our paintings, and you know they're all different, but they're all beautiful in their own way. And I'm yeah. sure everyone's painting is uh, beautiful in its own way. I really like the textures mine got down here. That's my favorite. Wow. Oh wait. Wait, you gotta keep it there for longer. No, it's fine. I did overhead. Oh yeah. There you go. See the yeah. textures. Those are good textures. Oh yeah. Oh oh yeah. No, that's oh, great. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, really good. How how did you do that? <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right. Uh, so anyway. Thanks for watching. This to those of you that are still watching, the normal if this is your first time, the normal lives are different. Um, I'm not the normal teacher. Oh wait. I don't know where the camera is. It's all right. It's all right. You're good. I'm not the normal <laughs> I'm not the normal teacher. Uh, I'm just filling in for Sarah Cray, who is our watercolor artist, and she's fantastic. So I'd encourage you, if it's your first time, to give us at least one more shot uh, next Tuesday for Sarah to teach you because she is an actual artist and she's fantastic and she'll teach you techniques. Uh, like I said, she was on vacation, so I filled in just so that we could, uh, we could have a good time. Um, check out our website, letsmakeart.com. Support us if you want to. We've got watercolor paint kits. We also have a watercolor subscription box. We also do hand lettering. We've actually have our hand lettering artist running the cameras tonight. Hello. So uh, check that out too. Thursday. We have a live on Thursday with Nicole at 7? 15. S same time, same place. Uh, and that's also a good time if you're into making cool things with words on them. Yeah. yeah. Anything you want to add to that, Nicole? So I wanted to see your um, birds up close. Whose birds? My birds up close? Yeah. How up close? <laughs> <laughs> you showed pretty close. <laughs> it won't auto oh. <laughs> What not? Okay. No. <laughs> My birds are sad. <clears throat> are they zoomed in? They're as zoomed in as they can get. Keenan's birds. It's for the birds. Good. They're all good. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I don't think, uh, is there something I'm missing? You do this every week, so. Uh, no, just join us next week. We have a tutorial releasing tomorrow. Yeah, we also have a Facebook group called uh, Let's, Let's Make, Make Art. Art Watercolor, mm -hmm. which has got a, several people in there if you want to share your painting or see what other people are doing. Um, we've got a same group for lettering, Let's Make Art Lettering. And uh, yeah, thank you. Bye. Yeah, turn it off. This is really awkward. Now everyone, <laughs> everyone's kind of watching. Hit we're supposed to turn live. it off. Hit the go live. We're video. still live, so they're just like, oh, this is weird. Did you get it? Stop. Did press stop? Yeah. Yeah, hit stop.